In this video, I'm going to go over um, the practice midterm that I'm posting in my open math. I'm going to do each and every problem um, showing the steps, and you can fast forward through the ones that you're good with, or rewind for the ones that you want repeated. And um, I would rec recommend doing this one before you do your own practice midterm, which is a quiz in my open math. And that will get you well prepared for the actual midterm. Okay, number one. Um, so you should print out the practice midterm that I posted so that you can follow along. It says the function h of x equals x plus 9 cubed can be expressed in the form f of g of x, where f of x is x cubed and g of x is, well, your function is h of x equals x plus 9 cubed, and you want um, h of x to be f of g of x. And it tells you that f of x is x cubed. Well, what do you have to replace x with to get x plus 9 cubed? Well, it must be x plus 9. So that means your inside function then is x plus 9. Number 2 says find the slope of a line that goes through the points 4, 11, and negative 5, negative 14. So remember that m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the points we're given are 4, 11, and negative 5, negative 14. So this would be my x1, y1, x2, y2. So m is equal to negative 14 minus 11 over 4, or sorry, negative 5, um, minus 4. So that's going to be negative 25 over negative 9, which when you have a negative divided by a negative, you have to simplify that to make it positive 25 over 9. Number 3. f of x is a linear function where f of negative 2 is 4 and f of 2 is 2. Find the equation for f of x. So the first part is going to be like the last problem where we need to find the slope. So these translate to two points, negative 2, 4, and 2, 2. So m is equal to 2 minus 4 and 2 minus a negative 2. That's negative 2 over 4. That simplifies to negative one-half. Now we're going to use y equals mx plus b. Replacing the y with one or other of the points that were given, I'm going to use negative 2, 4. So y is 4. m is negative one-half. That's what we just found and x is negative 2. Now all that's left is to find b. So that's 4 is equal to positive 1 plus b. Subtracting the 1 on both sides, we get that 3 is equal to b. So finally we have our function. Let's put it now in function notation f of x is equal to negative one-half x plus three. Number four. Simplify the expression completely. And the expression is um, 
1 over 11x to the negative 4. Well, it's the x to the negative 4 um, that needs some attention. That needs to be changed to a positive 4 and brought up to the numerator. The 11 doesn't have any exponent on it, so it just stays. So we get x to the 4th over 11. Number 5. We want to write the 6th root of x to the 5th using rational exponents. That's going to be x to the 5th power over 6. The exponent is the numerator. The radical, or radicand, is the denominator. Number 6. We're asked to solve the equation 20z squared minus 19z plus 3 equals 0. Now you're allowed to use your calculator on the exam and you're also allowed to use the quadratic formula program. Um, so you can go ahead and, and use your quadratic formula program. For those of you who like to do it by hand, z would be uh, negative b, which is 19, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that would be 19 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. <clears throat> so let's see what we get when we do that. Um, 20, negative 19, and 3. You should get two solutions. Z is equal to 0.75 and Z is equal to 0.2. Um, fractional 0.75 would be 3 fourths and 2 would be 2 tenths or 0.2 would be 2 tenths which is the same as 1 fifth. Number 7 we have the inequality x minus 6 times x minus 2 squared greater than 0. First you want to solve the equation x minus 6 times x minus 2 squared equals 0. Well that's going to give you two values x equals 6 and x equals 2. Those are your border points. So 2 and 6 are the only two points that you need to put on your number line. Then we need test points. So what x, what x equals 6 and x equals 2 tells us is that um, you're crossing the x-axis at 2 and at 6. This wants to know where are we above the x-axis. So let's pick a point 0, 3, and 7. So if you plug in 0, we have 0 minus 6 times 0 minus 2 squared. This part here will always be positive, the 0 minus 2 squared, because it's squared. Um, whether you have a negative number or a positive number, after you square it, you get positive. And then the 0 minus 6 gives you negative 6, so that's a negative times a positive. That's going to be less than 0. So I'm going to go up here and put an x on that interval because that one doesn't work for what we want. Um, 3 minus 6 times 3 minus 2 squared. Again, it's a negative times a positive, so it's going to be negative. Cross that one out. 
Last one is 7 minus 6 times 7 minus 2 squared. That, of course, will be positive. So that's the, inter the only interval that works. And it's going to be the interval from 6 to infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. And since it's strictly greater than, not no equal to, we're going to put a parenthesis with the 6 as well. Um, so your answer would be 6 to infinity or in um, <clears throat> the other notation is x greater than 6. Number 8. Number 8 has a graph, so let me import that. All right, here's the graph, and it's asking to find the limit um, as x approaches 2 from the left. That's what that little negative sign means. So since you can't see me pointing, I'm going to use my pen. Coming to 2 from the left, and then following over to the y-axis, we see that the answer would be 3. Um, now we want the limit as we come from the right. So I'm going to use green this time. Coming from the right as we approach 2 and looking over to the y, or yeah, the y-axis, that's also 3. So since the limit from the left and the right are exist and they're both the same, then the limit at 2 exists and that's just 3. Now the actual value of um, f of 2 is right here, this closed dot, and that would be negative 2. Number 9 is evaluating the limit algebraically. So we want the limit as x approaches negative 5 of negative x minus 5 over x squared minus 25. So we need to factor both the top and the bottom. The top we can take out a negative 1, and we're left with x plus 5. The bottom factors to x plus 5 and x minus 5. We see that the x plus 5s can cancel, and we have the limit as x approaches negative 5 of negative 1 over x minus 5. Plugging in the negative 5, we get negative 5 minus 5 gives us negative 1 over negative 10, which of course is just 1 tenth. Number 10 has another graph. We want to um, determine which of the rules for continuity is violated at x equals 2. So we can see that the function is not continuous at x equals 2, but which rule is it breaking? Our choices are that f of 2 is defined. Um, the limit as we approach 2 of the function is equal to the function value. And 3 is that the limit actually exists. Well, the limit, um, as we approach from the left to 2, is 2. And as we approach from the right, it's also 2. So the limit exists. This is OK. The limit exists, and it's 2. 
Now the function value, if I just ask you what is f of 2, we see there's an open dot there. It might, it could be 2, but because that open dot is there, um, it means that it's undefined. It doesn't have a value at x equals 2. So first and foremost, it violates this rule that I'm circling in green, that it's not defined. And because it violates that one, it also violates this one, the second one, that the limit equals the function value. Can't possibly equal the function value if it's not defined. But um, the answer you want to put here is that f of a is, is defined because it, it breaks that one first and foremost. Number 11, um, use the limit definition of the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve. The limit definition is f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I recommend first starting with f of x plus h. Plugging x plus, or replacing all your x's with x plus h. So we have 6 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h plus 6. x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So we want that all times by 6. Distribute the 3. Next we can distribute the 6. Get 6x squared plus 12xh plus 6h squared, plus 3x, and then we can combine the 18 and the 6, make that plus 24. All right, this is just f of x plus h. f of x is simply the function that was given. So I'm going to go to the next page. Should I better write down what I have there? Before I go. Oh, that's what I did wrong. I knew something seemed off. Okay, before I do that, I put a 6 there, or maybe my H just looked like a 6, I don't know. But there's a mess up here. So this should be an h, which would make this 3h plus 6. I knew it felt funny combining terms because normally you don't combine any terms. All right, I think this, we're good now. All right, so keep that in mind. So remember, we... We're working towards the goal of finding the derivative, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of x, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And we have the f of x plus h part, the hard part. So let's plug this in now. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 6x squared plus 12xh plus 6h squared, plus 3x, plus 3h, plus 6. Now you want to subtract the whole function. So carry that negative all the way through, and you're going to have minus 6x squared, minus 12, no, minus 3x, and minus 6. I can just barely fit that all in there. All over h. 
Now if you did this right, all three of these last parts are going to cancel. So the negative 6 with the positive 6, negative 3x with the positive 3x, and the 6x squared with the negative 6x squared. So we have now the limit as h approaches 0 of 12xh plus 6h squared plus 3h all over h. But we notice that all three terms have an h, so we're going to divide out an h out of everybody. And that gives us the limit as h approaches 0 of 12x plus 6h plus 3. Plotting that 0 into h gives me 6 times 0, which is 0. All you're left with is 12x plus 3. Now that is the derivative. The next part is we need to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. So f prime of x is 12x plus 3. And we want to plug 1 in. That's 12 times 1 plus 3, which is 15. So that is your final answer. That's going to be the slope of your tangent line at x equals 1. Number 12 is f of x is equal to negative 5x squared plus x, 5 x, no, plus just x, uh, minus 5. First thing, evaluate f of x plus h, which just means replace all your x's with x plus h. All right, we need to square x plus h and distribute the negative 5. This time I'm going to do it all in one step. So it's going to be x squared times the negative 5, which is negative 5x squared. 2xh times the negative 5, negative 10xh. h squared times negative 5 is minus 5h squared. All right, so that is the answer for the first part. Then it wants you to evaluate f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that equals everything that we just got. and then subtract the function. So that's carrying the negative all the way through. We're going to get plus 5x squared minus x and plus 5 all over h. And remember, if you did it right, if the function itself had three terms, then those three terms should cancel out. And then your h is can also divide out. <clears throat> so what we're left with is um, negative 10x minus 5h and that's gone. Be ten. Negative ten x plus one. Oh right, when you cancel this h out, you get a one here. So plus one. All right, next page. That equals negative ten x minus five h plus 1. Now you're evaluating the limit of that expression. Which means just plug 0 in for h. Which means this expression will just be 0 and we get negative 10x plus 1. Let me write that a little clearer. 
which you know the other derivative rules now, so you know what your answer should be. <clears throat> All right, number 13. We're over halfway now. Or I guess we're exactly halfway. Lots of derivatives now using derivative rules. We want the derivative of f of x equals x to the eighth. Well, if you take the eight down in front, and subtract 1 from it, you get 8x to the 7th. g of x is negative 2x to the 4th power. And g prime of x would be 4 times negative 2, negative 8, and then subtract 1 from the power. So negative 8x cubed. And we have h of x is equal to 1 over x to the 4th. We want to rewrite that as x to the negative 4th to make it derivative friendly. Then h prime of x is negative 4x to the negative 5th. Again, you're bringing that power down in front and subtracting 1 from the exponent. Fourteen is f of x equals two plus three x minus two x squared. We're trying to find f prime of negative four. So f prime of x is the derivative of two, which is zero, derivative of three x, which is three, and the derivative of negative two x squared would be minus four x. Then we simply plug four in. We get 3 minus 4 times 4 equals 3 minus 16, negative 13. Oh, it was a negative 4, so plus 16. So that would be 19. Number 15, we want the derivative of the eighth root of x. Well, that's the same as x to the one-eighth power. So its derivative is equal to one-eighth x to the negative seven-eighths. If you're not good with the fractions, just use your calculator. You want to type 1 or 1 8th, 1 divided by 8, minus 1, enter, math, enter, enter. 16 ddx of 6 ln of x. Well, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And that 6 is just going to remain, so we get 6 over x. Let f of x, oh, sorry, this is 17. Let f of x equal 4x plus 5 minus 5e to the x. <clears throat> we want to find the equation of the tangent line. So we need the derivative, which is 4 minus 5e e to the x, because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And we want the tangent line at 0, 0, so we plug in 0. That's 4 minus 5e e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so that's just 4 minus 5, negative 1. That is our slope. To find b, we plug 0, 0 into the equation y equals mx plus b. And we see that our b is also 0. So m equals negative 1 and b equals 0.
Number 18 is a word problem um, about demand. It says that your demand function is d of q equals negative q squared minus 2q plus 590. And Q is in thousands of units, that's important, and D of Q is in dollars per unit. Compute the following, showing all calculations clearly. If 14,000 units are to be sold, what price should be charged for the item? Okay, so 14,000 units. Um, Q is in thousands of units, so really what we want to put in our equation is d of 14. So divide it by 1,000. So it's going to be negative 14 squared minus 2 times 14 plus 590. And if we do our calculations right, we should get 366. Let me double check that. Yeah. Now, a place that I could potentially see somebody messing up is right here. You can't do negative 14. Um, you have to be careful with your negative because it's 14 squared and then taking the opposite of that. So that should be a negative. Um, let me see what 14 squared is. Negative 196 there. All right, B, if a price of 555 is set for this item, how many units can you expect to sell? So the price was um, D of Q, so we want to put 555, and for D of Q, and solve this equation. Well, to solve a quadratic, you need to have one side equal zero. So I'm going to subtract 555 on both sides, and that gives me negative q squared minus 2q um, plus 35, yeah, equals 0. And then you can use um, your quadratic formula. Um, this one's actually not a bad one to factor, but I'm going to use the quadratic program where a is negative 1, b negative 2, and c 35. And I get two answers, negative 7 and 5, um, but of course only the positive one is applicable here. But it's in thousands of units, so you need to convert that to thousands of units, so it's 5,000. says, at what value does D of Q cross the Q axis? So that's simply solving negative Q squared minus 2Q plus 590 equals 0 using your um, quadratic program or doing it by hand, you should get 23.31. And probably another answer, like a negative one that doesn't make sense. Number 19. Suppose a pro product's revenue function is given by R of Q equals negative 3q squared plus 1,000q, where R of Q is in dollars and Q is in units sold. Find a numeric value for the marginal revenue at 105 units and record result, result in the box below. Um, marginal revenue 
is going to be our prime of q. So that's negative 6q plus 1,000. So at 105 units, we get our prime of 105 is negative 6 times 105 plus 1,000. And that should be 370. Let me double check. Yep. Number 20. We want to find the derivative of f of x equals negative 2x to the fifth power plus 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed all over x to the fourth. Um, one way you could do this is just simplify it. x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth would give you negative 2x. The x to the fourth and the middle term um, both divide out, so you get plus 2. And the last term you have 5x to the third over x to the fourth. That can simplify too, but instead of having any x's left in the numerator, you get one left in the denominator. So we get negative 2x plus 2 plus 5 over x. So for taking the derivative, we want to make it derivative friendly. Just make it 5x to the negative 1. Now to get the derivative, derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. Derivative of 2 is 0. And then we get minus 5x to the negative 2 for that last part. And if you want to put it back in um, form where there's no negative exponents, it would be minus 2 minus 5 over x squared. But I'm, I'll accept either one on the exam. Um, number 21 is a function, a rational function. We want to find the derivative. This one, um, we can't just simplify and avoid the quotient rule. We're going to have to do the quotient rule, which is a derivative of the top, so minus 2x times the bottom, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom squared. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You don't have to do anything else for me on that one. Um, and you don't have to do anything else in my open math for that one either. Right. 22 is g of x equals e to the x over 5 plus 3x. Again, we need the um, quotient rule. Derivative of the top is e to the x times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now this one, to put it in my open math, you are going to want to simplify. Um, so if we distribute, we get e to the x, or 5e e to the x, plus e to the x, 3x, minus 3e e to the x, all over, oh, I forgot to square it, 5 plus 3x squared. You can combine the like terms, and we get e to the x, times 3x um, plus 2e to the x all over the bottom. And then finally, um, we can factor out an e to the x, and we get 3x plus 2 all over the bottom. So I think you have to put it in this form you know, simplify it and put it in that form when you put it in my open math. 23 
23 is f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 7, all to the fourth. This one you want the chain rule, which says go ahead and bring that 4 down in front. So you get 4 times the inside. Subtract 1 and get 3 here. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Which is 2x plus 4. Make sure you put parentheses around that because you want to make sure you're indicating that you ind you're multiplying by that whole thing, not just one part. Um, and that's all you have to do for that one. Oh, I lied. You also have to evaluate f prime of 2. So that just means plug 2 in wherever you see an x. times 2 times 2 plus 4 and if you did all that correctly you should come up with 219,488 final problem of the hour number 24 suppose the position of a particle is given by s equals f of t which equals 2t cubed plus 6t plus 9. Find the velocity at time t. So your v of t is just the derivative of that since that's position. So it's 6t squared plus 6. Then it wants the velocity at 3 seconds so plug in 3 wherever you see a t and we get um, 54 plus 6, which is 60. A of t is the acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity. So it's velo um, velocity, yeah, which is, well, not 6. It's going to be 12 t, and then plug in 3 for that. So 12 times 3 is 36. Okay, I noticed when I was going through this that there isn't a problem um, where you have to use the product rule. So I'm going to make up a problem. x squared plus 3x plus 4 times e to the x plus 3. Now you could multiply that all out, but it's much easier to use the product rule. Product rule simply says take the derivative of the first, and that is 2x plus 3. Multiply that by the second, e to the x plus 3. Then add the first, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second would just be e to the x. And that's it. I wanted to make sure I gave you one extra problem on that.